You've got to live righteously. You've got to walk righteously. Yeah, you do. You, in other words, you've got to have your bridal gear on. Right. You've got to have yourself ready yes, when the bride's going to come. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You should be doing a lot of primping. Yes. With the righteousness of the saints. Praise Getting re ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we know that our robes is white because of his righteousness. Because we couldn't do any righteousness if it wasn't for his righteousness. Hallelujah. That's the only reason why we're righteous, because he is righteous. He made a way. He paid it all. Amen. So Jesus fulfilled the day of atonement when he shed his blood. The second part, if I can use this saying, is, is when we have our, when he gives us all, uh, when we have our garments on and there's no spots to it and he comes and we end up getting married and that marriage is going to take place in the seventh month he ain't going to be no more far off on for a way on hallelujah now something you need to understand is in Genesis 14 verse 18 and I'm going to go and just read a prophecy here because the book of Hebrews is loaded about Melchizedek I mean loaded, brothers and sisters. And, and this is what it says. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, bought forth bread and wine. Isn't that, isn't that not a coincidence? Bread and wine. What did he bring forth? Bread and wine. What did we take during the Passover? Bread and wine. Well, praise be the name of Jesus. Amen. And he was the priest of the Most High. And he blessed him and he said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God, which have delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he have given him tithes of all. Now, it was on this day that the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies to make atonement for the sins of the people. And he would take, before he entered into the Holy of Holies to make the sacrifice, he would take two goats. And one was called the scapegoat, and the other, I mean, he was pure. And clean, without spot, wrinkle, blemish, anything. And then they had the one that was full of sin. And what he would do is he would take the goat that was guilty. That's you and that's me. Of sin. And he would transfer the sins to the goat that didn't have any sins. That didn't have any blemishes. Didn't have any problems. Didn't have any faults. And he would take the goat that deserved death and let it go. But the goat that did not deserve any death at all. He would turn around and he would shed its blood in the place of the goat that deserved to die. That's what Jesus did for us. He, he took our place and he paid the penalty for our sins. When we repented of our sins, our transgressions and our iniquity and our hatred against God, Jesus, what he did was he went ahead and he applied his blood to us. So when he hung on that tree and he hung on that cross, all to your sins... Had it was transferred over to him, and then you were, you escaped the judgment of God, and Jesus set you free. Hallelujah! Now, you know this scapegoat refers to the one that is innocent. Jesus was innocent. Amen. We are guilty. Amen. And this is how we understand the sacrifice of Jesus. See, it's it, isn't it beautiful. See, Christianity ain't going to teach you this. They ain't going to teach you this because they have no understanding. And this is where the understanding of the old covenant and new covenant come in. More understanding, you'll see when, uh, from these next passages of scriptures that we're going to read. Let's get to Hebrews, the fifth chapter. You see, today we are in a serious influx of pastors and teachers and ministers and so-called prophets who don't have any understanding at all. And they teach uh, what they want to teach. Uh, and the truth is, they really need to be taught themselves so that they can become teachers. Because they definitely need to start all over again so they can teach all the principles of Christ. Now, we're going to read Hebrews 5, all right? Now, everything that you heard, keep in mind what you've heard, okay? Amen. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. But he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have... Uh, compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. Who can? Huh. For that he himself also is compassed 
with infirmity. And by reason thereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. Isn't that something? And no man taketh his honor to himself that he that is called of God as was Aaron. Ain't nobody can do this but, but, but a holy priest. He's the only one got the honor to perform this service, brothers and sisters. Amen. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made and high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. See, God bestowed his honor upon him. You hear that? Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. And he saith also to in, in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the whose order? The order of Melchizedek. And we saw him, the king of Salem, right? We read about him, right? All right. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, notice capital, yet, talking about Jesus, learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. Now you think about that for a moment. Here's Jesus, though he was the son, the very son of God, yet learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. Do you think we need to learn something? Amen. Hallelujah. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. See the reason why obedience is very important? Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. See, only God can do this. Who made Aaron a high priest? God did. <laughs> That's why Hebrews 5, 4 is sitting right there. I've been sitting there for years. It all points to Christ. Every bit of it. Now watch what he says right here. Of whom we have many things to say, we read before, and hard to be uh, uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. It's not that we have a problem saying. The problem is that you're being able to, you being able to have the ability to hear. For when in time past you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, um, which be the first principles and oracles of God, and I'll become such as have need of milk and not a strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a baby. We have a whole lot of unskillful preachers. A whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of unskillful pastors, unskillful ministers, unskillful teachers. We, we, I mean, we, we, we don't have a shortage of that, brothers and sisters. Amen. That's just something. That's because um, they were mama called and daddy said God didn't call them. Amen. But strong meat belong to them that are full age, even by reason of use. They have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And notice we teach that heavily, to be able to discern both good and evil. Is that right? Now, when you read Hebrews 6, start at verse 9 and go on to verse 20, you need to read that, and you need to read all of Hebrews 7 to get an understanding, because it's going to continually talk about that. Amen. Now, watch this. Notice. When we're in this atonement right here, it's, it's still talking about Christ. Look what it says right here. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, start at verse 16. And it says, and listen, listen very closely. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Did y'all hear that? Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we him no more. All right? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's the key. He is a new creature. That's why I'm always searching and looking for the Christ in people. I'm not trying to know you after your flesh. Now, I'm going to judge you, but I'm looking, I'm always looking for the Christ that is in you. I know the ramifications that we have in the flesh, but I'm looking to strengthen that which remains. Because there's very few that are remaining. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, if many men be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Because remember, God prepared himself a body. And have given to us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Reconciliation has to do with atonement. 